everybody to another awesome episode of Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. It is season 12. First episode of season 12. I'm your host, Jeff Bonomo, and I'm joined by my lovely wife, co-host, best friend, Desiree. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. We got some new equipment. We do. Yeah. I feel fancy. Yeah. We got new microphones. We got a new camera, <laughs> uh, some new lighting. Uh, yeah. So um, almost professional, I guess, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't want to push it. We do have a great show, uh, but I do want to say, uh, first of all, thank you for all uh, to all our sponsors. Thank you to our viewers. Uh, if you like what you uh, what we do here, facebook.com slash wine hops and road stops, go there. And of course, join the group because there's a lot of discussion about uh, all things alcohol and food related in our group and some random stuff too once in a while. Yeah. Uh, just post, you know, whatever. If you're if you're a business, uh, like a brewery, winery, distillery, a restaurant, you want to post there. Post, and then, of course, share it with your friends that we actually exist. That would be nice. That's all we ask, right? That's right. Right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's get uh, let's get rolling here. We've a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff to talk about today. But the first thing we're going to talk about is a new law that came into effect in Pennsylvania back in September, but we didn't mention it on the show because we were, on, uh, we were in between seasons. So we're going to mention it now because it's very important, very important about anyone that likes ca canned cocktails and stuff. The new law expands where you can buy hard seltzer and canned cocktails. Gone are the days when grabbing a canned cocktail meant braving the mysterious aisles of the fine wine and good spirits store. In Pennsylvania, things have changed. So now, picking up a spiked seltzer is as easy as grabbing a gallon of milk. You can now get ready to drink cocktails at grocery stores, gas stations, and even your own pizza joint. Now, back in July, Governor Josh Shapiro signed off on this bold move, unleashing the canned cocktail freedom that Pennsylvanians... I've only dreamed of. <laughs> now, of course, there are some rules keeping this under control. You know, we can't get out of control, Des. Canned cocktails can't be sold past 11. They are capped at 12.5% alcohol, which which is fine. I mean, you really need a canned cocktail more than 12.5 ABV? No, that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. And don't even think about pouring them into fancy cups. They got to stay in those trusty 16-ounce cans. So we think good news for people who like canned cocktails uh, and seltzers and stuff like that. Yeah, we're kind of moving up in the world here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, pretty much... Well, there's all these weird, like, alcohol laws. I think it's just so strange. And when you go to a different state, there's also other weird, weird alcohol laws. So, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of them. Uh, <laughs> like, why not sell them anywhere, anywhere like, you can get beer and, and stuff? Why not? Why, why... You have to keep them in the, the, the state store, like the old call. The state store. <laughs> <laughs> Closed on Sunday. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So uh, so there you go. Uh, there's some good news for people who like that kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to get to a viewer question next. Um, and it's pretty interesting. And uh, I started doing this recently when I, after this question was asked to us, I started doing this. And the question is, why should you roll limes and lemons when you're making drinks? Do you know? Um, it's not something that I've ever done. I have noticed people doing it. I'm going to say it like loosens up the juice. Absolutely. That's oh, okay. exactly what it does. See, I'm smart. Rolling limes and lemons before juicing is a helpful trick for maximizing juice output. <laughs> you like how I put it, that, huh? When you roll the fruit on a firm surface with light pressure, it breaks down the internal membranes, making it easier to extract the juice. This process helps release more liquid ensuring you get the most out of each lime or lemon without too much effort. Now for an extra juice boost. Some people, I've never done this, but some people microwave the fruit for a few seconds before rolling and that can uh, help soften it further and make the juice flow easier. So when you're next time you're making a gin and tonic or you're making your margaritas or whatever, anything with limes and lemons, you know, we'll roll. Is, it, is there a trick to it, or you just roll one? Yeah, like a DJ. Just, <laughs> just. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, wiki, 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 like that, yeah. So yeah, roll them, and it'll just kind of break it up, and it's easier to squeeze them and juice them and stuff like that, so. <laughs> if you're worried about getting as much juice out of your lime as possible, or your lemon. Hey, with the price of groceries, you got to squeeze every last drop. <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right, uh, we're going to go uh, take a break, but when we come back, our road stop is the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. We went there recently, and we have a little uh, little showcase of the beers and other things we drank and ate uh, throughout the day. So don't go away. There's more wine hops and road stops coming up next. To 
Wine, Hops, and Roadstock shot on location deep within the Latimer compound in Latimer, Pennsylvania. That's Dez. This is the reason why people watch the show. So, Dez, right? Yes. Uh, a couple weeks ago, where did we go? We went to the Renaissance Fair. The Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. So, I'm going to just talk about it and get right into it because there's a lot to cover. The Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, it's like hopping into a time machine but landing somewhere between Monty Python and a Game of Thrones episode. Where nobody dies but everyone's wielding turkey legs. <laughs> I had a turkey leg that uh, first time in years actually. Now it's set at the Mount Hope Estate. It's an immersive experience featuring jousting knights, juggling jesters, and a lot of people in costume, both attendees and workers. But we've been going there for years so this year we decided to make sure we sampled copious amounts of booze to report back to our fans. We are here at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. Something we do every year, but this year we decided to bring a camera along and talk a little about what we're drinking and what we're doing. So another thing we're doing here, I got a shot of spiced rum and let me tell you, it's pretty good. It's not, it's not Captain Morgan, it's my opinion is way better than that. Very spicy. Want to try it, my dear? She doesn't. <laughs> She's not a fan of rum, but I am. And okay, there we go. See, see you, you twist her arm a little bit. Put a camera in front of her. She'll try it. It's very spicy. It is very spicy. I mean, you can probably dump it in your diet coke that you have here. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like spiced rum, you're gonna really like this because there's there's an emphasis on the spice. We'll say. I also have a pale ale. Uh, the bartender told me it's really hoppy, so I'm pretty excited to try that. I've had their my PA already today, and it was good. Um, that's a pale ale. You want to try it? Yeah, give it a shot, my dear. Yeah. But just so you know, he was part of the bar. No, the bartender was slurring with me. She liked my power shirt. It's like, it. Yeah, yeah it, it is good. It, 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 I mean, if you were a pale ale lover, I'd go for this. It's very good and bitter. There's a lot of hop to it, but it doesn't, it's not like an IPA. It's like a pale ale. It's a little bit more subdued, a little bit more uh, smooth, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I mean, if you like the, the ales, we don't want to go all the way with the IPA. I, I'd go with this. So far, I, their beers, we'll say, have come pretty long way. Uh, I remember when they first started brewing here, I thought the beers were fantastic. I'll be honest, they dipped down a little bit in quality in a couple of years, but I think they're back. And they have a really, really big selection here. I don't have to say that because I have to. Plank Walker's IPA at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. Last year, I don't think they had this, so I'm pretty excited about this. It's hoppy, it's bitter. I know my wife won't like it, but I do. <laughs> and I also got a shot too. A little special to run today. 16 bucks, shot in a beer. Not too bad, it's good as it is. Oh, it's some kind of like fireball type whiskey. And it's really hot and burny, but sweet. It's gonna be a good day for it. Much. What you drinking there? I'm drinking a beer. What kind of beer is it? <laughs> it's a stout. And I like it. <laughs> okay, cask whiskey uh, from the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. Let's try this too. Mm. Oh, you know, I love, I, I, I've learned to love whiskey because of my friends. Mm, that is smooth. We got pizza here from Scrappy's. Scrappy's Pizza at the Renaissance Fair. I'm not, uh, not expecting too much, but like the master says, one bite, everyone knows the rules. Compared to Hazelton Pizza? Mm. So there you go. That's our trip to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. I also want to mention, uh, the Spirits Distilling Company uh, had a lot of really great spirits. We brought some tequila back too, which I, I don't think there's any left actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we sampled some rum and some gin I believe they make and they make some excellent whiskey. Yeah. So we had a great time there. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it's a blast. It is. There's a lot of good music, a lot of things to see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know if you can tell by the video that we showed, but I spent most of my time with uh, uh, our good friends, uh, the Summer Dax, especially uh, Joe and Aaron. And um, we just sat around the bar for most of the day. And the ride home was fun, too. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll have to put some of that up later at a later date. Uh, we did some uh, music reviews with our, with our daughter and her friends, um, just kind of showing how old we are compared <laughs> to them. Uh, that was fun. But yeah, we had a great time. Um, you know, like every year we go, there's always that, they always had something new, but there's also always like the, um, the, the usual stuff there too. Uh, like the joust and which is a great, a great thing. I mean, it's always so much fun to watch people jousting and some of the costumes, like every year they get better and better. Like there's some of the people, and they're not, they don't even work there. Like a lot of people that come just like show up and they look better than most than some of the workers, you know. It's it's amazing. How, uh, we didn't really dress up, but you know. well, the girls did. But yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Not this year. We, we went there and we ate and we drank. That's right. That's right. And it was it was a lot of fun. We're gonna take a short break, guys. But coming back, we're gonna talk about a party that we've been throwing for a very long time, and we call it the Night of a Thousand Beers. We're gonna give you the rules. We're gonna show you what goes on a little bit, a little bit behind the scenes here, and. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the beers that we sampled. Uh, good, bad, and ugly. So we'll be right back with more One Hops and Road Stops. Back to White Hops and Road Stops, shut on location at the Latimer Compound here in Pennsylvania, where it is one day 40 degrees and the next day it's 80. <laughs> That's what we're going through right now. You know, it's been really hot, <laughs> kind of crazy. I'm not arguing though, because I'd rather it be warm. I know. Yeah. So I know you still want that fall chill in the air because you love fall. We're getting it a little bit, but you know, like in the daytime, it was what, 70 degrees yesterday? Yeah, we're crazy. easing into that fall okay. feel, which I think most people are happy about, even though it's getting dark really early, at least it's nice out. Now, the one thing we do every fall, usually around Halloween time, is we throw a party that we like to call a night of a thousand beers. And um, we did it again this year, <laughs> and uh, it was fun, uh, a little bit smaller than usual, but uh, throughout the years, we, we open up our <laughs> TV show set here to family and friends, and uh, we drink a lot of alcohol, <laughs> drink a lot of beer. We, we review beers, like, kind of right there, you know, we try new stuff here and there. So uh, let me just go through what exactly a night of a thousand beers actually is. For people who want to throw a party like this, uh, it's a lot of fun. Make sure, of course, you have Uber rides for everybody and everyone drinks responsibly and all that stuff. Like, don't, don't, don't drink a drive. Yeah, we bought really <laughs> nice reclining couches so everybody can just stay afterwards. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right, check this out. Welcome to a night of a thousand beers, a Halloween tradition where costumes and curious brews collide in a truly unforgettable way. Here, our guests arrive dressed as anything from mad scientists to mystical creatures with one crucial accessory. Four to six of the weirdest, most experimental beers that they can find, from pickle-flavored lagers to marshmallow porters. Every strange beer is welcome. The stranger, the better. And sometimes, of course, they're just kind of normal, kind of everyday beers, but sometimes we get some really weird stuff, so that's cool. Now, sampling is the sacred ritual. Done from a cherished collection of festival glasses accumulated over the years of going to beer fests each with its own stories and fingerprints of the brave drinkers that came before us. As the night progresses, we rate, we laugh, and maybe grimace at a few eccentric brews, all in the Halloween spirit. Then around midnight or so, all the unfinished beers are poured from each open bottle into one pitcher to form the almighty super beer. It's daring, yes, it's absurd, and yet someone will be dared to drink it, because what's Halloween without a little risk? So... Desiree, let's give the viewers a brief look at what went on the other night when uh, we had our Night of a Thousand Beers party and what a few of our guests thought about some beers. I have peanut butter, milk stout, nitro. Now, the cool thing about this is it's not a 4%. This is not a session. No, no. 
It's not a 5% either, like your Miller Lights. This is a six point two, my friend. I'm gonna try it out. It smells delicious. I'm smelling, mm, I smell some peanut butter. I smell a lot of peanut butter. And I love my peanut butter. I love my peanut butter so much, I had a duo called Peanut Butter and Jeffy. That was a good name. That was, that was my, uh, I thought See, was this is the name. only reason I'm friends with you, but yeah. it's a good reason. Peanut Butter and Jeffy was a good duo. Dude. This is very peanut buttery, and I enjoy the smell. Oh boy. I'm gonna give it a shot. Pun intended. Processing. Oh. My gosh, it tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the jelly. <laughs> I really like it. This stuff is awesome. What do you think? I mean, is that a one and done, or or, or can you drink that all night? Oh, uh, I could drink it all night. So right now, right now, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about left hand brewing right now. I'll wait till you're done coughing. Oh my god! I'm left handed. So right now, right now we're gonna talk about left hand brewing. They're winning the night of a thousand beers because everyone so far has loved this beer. So first thing I notice is this is the first time I've taken a shot of beer since I was about 22 doing Power Hour. Second thing I notice is it's nice. It's very nice. I like it. It's It's got a smooth feel. It doesn't have a very bitey hops. There's this fellow that I know named Jeff Bonomo and he's got this thing he says and I, I truly love it. I actually use it on my own. Where I say, I want an IPA that makes me want to shave my tongue when I get done drinking it. <laughs> right now, I don't want to shave my tongue. It's empty. Yeah, you can look at it again if you like. But it's currently empty. I enjoyed it. It was very smooth. Um, it didn't leave anything on my tongue. It didn't bite me. But it was a nice, it was a nice hoppy feel. I'd drink it again. I'd probably drink two or three. Or four. Five. What do you got there, Joey? Oh, oh it's good. Smoke. What is it? Rats. Graffiti Highway. First time? Yeah, very good. What do you think about that? I know you had it before. Only a little Ooh. cut. No. Bad. What's wrong with you, Joey? It's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> Excuse me. Is this, is this thing on? Cast? Casting? Yeah, yeah. Is it, Jeff, is it on? So there you go. Night of a Thousand Beers. Want to try it yourself? Go ahead. We actually cleaned up this bar pretty good, pretty fast. Uh, you know, yeah. that, you know it's so. usually pretty sticky when yeah. we're done. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then it, it turns into um, not only daring to drink the pitcher full of beer, <laughs> super beer, yeah. um, you know, it turns to the vodka cherries and whatever crazy peppers we have. Are you talking about them? Oh yeah. They've been here. They've been here behind the bar for a couple years now. Yeah, those I made a, a while ago. Yeah, we cracked back. Them out. Yeah, um, and somebody always wants to have one. Hey, go for it. <laughs> I don't quite remember. Uh, I think I had one. I'm not sure. It's not on video, so there's no there's no evidence. You did. Ah, of course I did. <laughs> All right, guys. I uh, got a little bit more one hops and road stops coming up after the break. We're gonna take a break. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And that's about it for this episode of Wine Hops and Road Stops. But before we go, of course, we have to say thank you to sponsors. Thank you to fans. Thank you to the people who stop us on the street when we're out in public and say, hey, 
I know you guys. What did that guy call you? The the wine lady. Wine lady. Yeah. At the Bloomsburg Fair. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Bob yeah. and Amanda. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun to, to meet people who really like what we do. And we're going to continue to do this as long as uh, you keep watching. Also, we're going to have a contest. We decided we're going to have a contest. Uh, we decided pretty much right before the show. So there's not really any rules yet. <laughs> but I'll tell you, everything that we are accumulating over the last couple seasons, uh, different merch and stuff from various uh, breweries, wineries, distilleries, anything that we have, uh, we've been keeping in this basket, basically. <laughs> so uh, one lucky fan is going to, uh, to get all of it. Uh, and we're just going to keep on accumulating stuff this season. Uh, the season and then uh towards the end of the season we'll announce the winner sounds yeah, good so just you know watch our facebook page watch our youtube channel uh, of course you gotta subscribe to it that's gonna be one of the rules you have to subscribe to the youtube channel because we gotta get those numbers up man uh but yeah you'll be entered into the contest and then uh, we'll ship you out a whole bunch of stuff at the end of the season <laughs> uh who knows what you're gonna have by the end of the season uh you know it could be stickers could be um, i don't know doormats or could be picnic benches who knows i don't know maybe Fire a, hat, a maybe hat maybe a cozy who knows yeah yeah we'll uh, see. bottle openers you know stuff like that uh yeah so that's what we're gonna do uh to celebrate our 12th season uh, also, facebook.com slash wine hops and load stops is our Facebook page. Go there, join the group, and talk and talk and talk and type and talk. You know. Yes. But no politics. All right. That's it. Uh, I don't even have a beer in front of me. <laughs> so, life's too short to have a bad drink of anything, of a big boot. Life's too short to have just a big boot filled with um, bottle caps. Uh, so, have a big boot with someone you love. <laughs> Until next time on Wine Hops and Rose Dogs. Thing. Wow. <laughs> wonderful! 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 Right. Captain Lou Albano has done this before. Oh, oh, you yes. are not the first person to say that. Let's go!